For a while in the lab, I mean, I'll go into the tank with some algae and I lean over and they can just detect my shadow and they know I'm the guy with the kelp. And they would literally <laughs> rear back with their front of their foot and grab the piece of kelp out of my hand, some of them even. Do you, do you name them? Uh, I try not to because you usually have to kill them later. <laughs> so it's <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, the name thing can make that a little harder. <laughs> so, but it's hard. I mean, they have little eyes and heads and you know, when you start to see that, it's like, ugh, it gets a little harder to, in some psychological way to pack some, you know? <laughs> new broodstock animals that were collected in the San Juan Islands by the Fish and Wildlife Dive Team. Um, and today we are basically taking all of our morphometrics data on these new animals. So we want to get shell length, shell width, uh, wet weight, uh, sex, uh, the ripeness of the animal. So we'll be taking a look at the gonads. Uh, and then we're going to tag each animal just so that we know who's who. And this allows us to track individuals through the spawning process. Well, with a species like abalone, they're broadcast spawners, they need to be in close proximity to each other to have successful reproductive events, right? When you start seeing population declines, now these animals get spread out, density decreases, uh, the animals just aren't close to each other anymore. The animals that are left are spaced out over a wide area. So now, when they do spawn, they just don't have a good opportunity to have successful reproductive events because those gametes aren't ever meeting each other in the water column. Yeah, we get to eat some of our samples sometimes. Um, you know, things that we just sample for the digestive gland, for bacterial presence, you know, we'll have the whole foot left over, so. <laughs> That's all meat, you know, that whole foot muscle. And as you can imagine, it's really dense and tough, so you kind of have to take fine slices of abalone steak, you know, and it definitely involves a pounding process. And sit there with your hammer and you get abalone meat all over you. <laughs> no, they're pretty tasty and we've got some good recipes for them, you know. All right, two more and we're done. Hopefully I can find two more.